like to welcome Alice and Kate uh, to this debate. We're so excited to have you here. Uh, you beat us to the punch. Uh, now that your visa says you've visited an Ebola infected area, you won't be able to leave. You're welcome to stay on my couch for as long as you like. Uh, I find your accent very charming. You're welcome to stay. However, if you don't like fried food, we also have the option of surviving on breakfast tacos. You should not <laughs> underestimate this. Now, we applaud your good faith and trust in intergovernmental organization, but our position comes down to one simple idea, that forced segregation is bad. We're going to talk about three things. One, the health impacts of segregation. Two, the loss of national sovereignty. And then we're going to tell you how we actually fight diseases. Ultimately, this debate is not about whether closing borders or managing borders is beneficial, but whether the World Health Organization should be empowered to impose this decision on others. Remember, the resolution is asked to defend the power to close borders. Why they might convince you that it is reasonable for them to manage or offer screening, remember that they are giving the World Health Organization sovereign power to enforce and close borders any way they see fit. First, segregation is ineffective because it prevents the treatment uh, and facilitates further transmission. Uh, it means that there will be no more free flow of aid or doctors from non-governmental organizations. Even if they allow them through a screening process, the fear of bureaucratic stalling and an overwhelming amount of people entering the country would, one, deter people from entering for fear that they won't be able to leave, and two, physically delay through the process of paperwork and screening the, uh, the aid efforts. So currently, more people in West Africa die of preventable and treatable diseases such, such as malaria, diarrhea, and pneumonia than Ebola. If their health infrastructure is already so poor, shutting out doctors and medical supplies or even delaying it will assuredly make it worse. And how can we fight disease without doctors? Secondly, closing borders to all, uh, uh, closing borders to travelers is impossible. We're talking about closing off West Africa, i.e., <coughs> controlling the movements of a population of over 340 million. People can lie, forge documents, or carry more than one passport. Individuals in quarantined countries would have an incentive to flee the area if they perceive that no more aid will be forthcoming. Just because there are cases of Ebola in a country does not mean that everyone in a country is a threat. And we ought to be focused on treating individuals, not entire countries. In order to do this, the nation's government, as well as the World Health Organization, would have to pool resources to patrol the border and tighten security. And let's not forget that if Rick Perry can't secure a border, then no one can. <laughs> Strike have run off health workers, burned 
burned down the second floor of the Ministry of Health and created roadblocks to prevent ambulances from collecting bodies. When you segregate countries, you strengthen oppositional factions in the nation state. And the more desperate and hungry people are, the more likely they are to align themselves with these factions and resort to violence to protect themselves and their family. The chaos of civil arrest would make it impossible for health workers to do their job. That's time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, you said this debate isn't about um, whether closing borders is beneficial, but surely if the benefit of closing borders is that we save millions of lives, that is enough of a benefit. It's not if one all those benefits can be achieved if a country makes the individual decision to. So if it is beneficial, you must also prove that it is good to set a precedent for the World Health Organization to do this. Because this resolution is ultimately not just about whether they could do it or could be effective, but what kind of precedent it sets. It violates all current international norms. So it can't just be about whether closing borders is good, but whether it is good to violate the precedent of national sovereignty. Okay, so on this sovereignty you know, there's those nasty WHO wanting to save lives and kill people. Could you give me an example of why they wanted to meddle with sovereignty and control national politics before? They don't. Actually, the World Health Organization thinks that closing borders is bad. They have come out and stated that this is not a good policy for controlling disease. Interesting. Okay, um, you've talked about how doctors have feared entering, you know, there'll be paperwork and they might, they might get trapped there. But, you know, Doctors do go into countries in Africa where it is difficult to get a visa and you know, Sierra Leone where there have been civil wars. So why have doctors been brave enough to enter in these circumstances? Why will suddenly a quarantine zone, which they often enforce themselves, suddenly deter? It is different, one, because there is a mass influx, i.e. more quarantine and more paperwork, but also because of the kind of panic and civil unrest will discourage doctors from going there. Okay, so there's not panic and civil unrest if you don't close borders. It is not a reason to do to have civil war. Even if there is some amount of conflict now, that is never a justification to make that conflict worse and discourage people more. Okay, and um, you talked about how you know a big problem in terms of pooling resources, but surely it's easier to pool resources even in West Africa than Africa, North America, South Africa, and Europe. Right, but they also don't have to patrol the borders to stop refugees and people fleeing in order to keep them in. You don't have to patrol borders. That's a very costly endeavor and ultimately a military endeavor as well. And that ends up fighting people, not the disease. That's a huge burden to patrol, to control 340 million people. Yeah, that's true. So which do you think costs more? Controlling those 300 million people or controlling the 6 million people in the planet? if Ebola spreads everywhere. Ebola won't spread everywhere if we have proper health infrastructure, which is not possible through your plant. <laughs>